This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. Uh, I already know this is going to be a dumpster fire of a comment section. I don't even know where to start, fellas. Blonde has been one of my most anticipated movies of the year, mostly because it looked like it would either be something pretty phenomenal or an absolute stinker. And I hate to say it, but P.U., this is a bad movie. Blonde is a movie about Marilyn Monroe, starring Anna de Armas and directed by Andrew Dominique. It's also based on the book of the same name by Joyce Carol Oates. The discourse surrounding this film has already been tiring, so I just kind of want to get right to the point. I think this is an extremely exploitative film that doesn't justify its existence or work at all no matter how you look at it. Let's get into it. The first thing anyone's gonna say is, well, it looks stunning, to which I say, yeah, you know what, it does. The cinematography in this film is pretty breathtaking from time to time, but if you come out of this film feeling dizzy or generally unwell, this could be because of a number of things, but one of them might be the thousands of times it changes the aspect ratio. The reasoning for changing the aspect ratio so often is as deep as you think, Dominique claiming it was to mimic the photos of Marilyn. And I'm just like, what? well, why? Why Why do we do that? It only distances the viewer even further than they already are, feeling no closer to Marilyn Monroe than you did as someone finding these photos in a magazine. I honestly think the film is at its best when it fully dips its toes into surrealism with its cinematography, like that one shot where the mattress turns into a waterfall. Undeniably kind of silly, but honestly, kind of liked it. I mean, on one hand, it is a technical achievement to be able to replicate these images so accurately and to blow them up in a way that's cinematic. It's also fascinating to take photography from the past and kind of reshape what happened around these photos. But on the other hand, I don't see what this brings to the film other than another level of fake depth. I mean, seriously, all exploitation aside, the technical aspects of this film are, like, not that great. The score by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis is haunting in all the right ways. The cinematography, as mentioned, is pretty a good amount of the times, but the editing and the sound mix... What the hell? It really pulled me out like multiple times, which is the biggest surprise of this whole experience. I thought it would at least be technically there. Any choice it makes just goes against what the choice was trying to say in the first place. We want to deconstruct the media's perception of Marilyn Monroe by strictly shooting her from a voyeuristic media-like perspective. Uh, okay. We want to talk about the exploitation of Marilyn Monroe while being w more exploitative than most things that happen in this movie. I'm definitely not the first person to link this, but if we want to talk about a fictional biopic about a larger-than-life female icon. <coughs> Remember Spencer? That's a movie that uses its cinematography to bring us deeper into Diana's inner torment in a way that is completely unique, unpretentious, and effective. Spencer doesn't come off like a collection of flashy images, although some of them I would frame on my wall. It understands the medium it's working in. It traps the viewer in these frames that are just a little too crammed, with colors that are just a little off what they're supposed to be. Blonde's images are pretty. Of course they are. They're based on some of the most beautiful photography of their time, but it feels no deeper than a perfume commercial. It preaches this idea that Marilyn Monroe only exists in front of the camera, but the real person is Norma Jean, which is an interesting idea, sure. But by shooting its subject mostly in these polished, unnatural, dare I say violating positions, you never really get the raw, empathetic look at the film subject that it claims it is. So yes, while I can say I like the way the film looks, it does look pretty for the most part, I can also say the same thing about most things I see on Instagram on a daily basis. It does not help what the film is ultimately trying to say. It doesn't make me feel anything, it's just numbing after a while. Which brings me to my next point, the provocative nature of it all. If you like Blonde, that's all good and fine, but don't claim I didn't get this movie because it made me too uncomfortable. Something making me too uncomfortable does not mean it's a good movie. And that isn't to say it made me feel too uncomfortable. I didn't really feel a damn thing the entire time. <laughs> I don't think movies that aim to just make you squirm are automatically great movies. There needs to be something to the shock that says something about ourselves in some interesting way. Blonde says nothing. Which I don't think was Blonde's goal initially. Dominique has said that the point of this film was that he was trying to explore how childhood trauma follows its way into adulthood and how someone with that trauma perceives the world around them because of that. Which is great. I mean, it's not great, but it's interesting. And especially interesting when you're talking about someone like Marilyn Monroe. I think this idea peeks its head in every now and then in the film, but mind you, this thing is almost three hours long. And instead of properly exploring this idea, a good portion of it is just abuse after abuse after abuse. She's either getting verbally abused by someone on set, or sexually harassed, or assaulted by her husband, or getting an abortion she didn't want, or calling someone daddy. It seems like she just jumps from one traumatic situation to the next, and her past seems to creep its way into these events, sure, but because there isn't ever a moment to better understand Monroe as a person, her depression and the events that eventually happen in the film just don't feel that realistic or nuanced or 
Like I've been saying, interesting. It, it just felt numbing. Which, do you know how hard you gotta mess up to make some of these things feel numbing? I mean, really? And I know the film is like, we're not talking about Marilyn Monroe, the person. We're talking about the image, so we're following an image, not a person. It's like, sure, but did we forget that Marilyn Monroe was a person at one point? A real human being? To reference another film that does what Blonde tried to do better, I don't think the themes in this film are too dissimilar from those in this year's Pleasure, directed by Ninja Thyberg. This is a film about a Swedish woman moving to LA to try and become the next big porn star. The film deals with a dangerous industry for women and contains many scenes that aren't easy to watch. I mean, I'd go as far to say it's the hardest film I've had to get through just because of how graphic it gets. This film, unlike Blonde, feels effective with how it tells a story of abuse and that it understands that. To say anything about this, you need to understand where the character is coming from, how she responds to the situation, and how these situations affect her moving forward. This film has one of the darkest and most fascinating character arcs in recent memory that isn't too unlike a lot of real situations, but feels worth telling. It's a great movie. There's also obviously Fire Walk With Me, which people hated it when they first saw it, so because we hate Blonde, we're gonna like it later. What I'm getting at is that making a compelling film about abuse means knowing how to tell the story of everything surrounding the abuse, not just the abuse, because how the abuse affects the person is where the meat of the film is. This year's Women Talking understands this and never showing the abuse, only the aftermath and discourse. Blonde is just strictly abuse. With Blonde, things feel hazy. It feels like Marilyn shows up in rooms she doesn't remember entering with people she doesn't remember meeting. And while this may try to say something about how quietly abused she was and how uncontrollable her actions were under such a destructive system, it doesn't do it in a way that connects the audience to anything because we never really know who she is. I don't think that's because the film doesn't know either. I believe Dominique did extensive research. The film just doesn't want us to see it. Now, I'm admittedly not even a Marilyn Monroe expert, but I know that this person on the screen is nowhere close to being the real person. She, she's done so many other things. Andrew Dominique's perception of Marilyn Monroe in this film, at least, is someone who had childhood trauma and kept living a miserable life, kept getting abused, and was never happy because of her trauma, which is frankly just a really one-noted and boring way of showing a character on screen. And once again, I know the movie and its defenders are gonna hammer home the fact that this movie is about an image, a symbol. It's not about Marilyn Monroe the person. I'll say it again, I think that's an interesting idea, but when it's presented in such an annoying and bleak and tiresome way, it's hard not to walk away from this asking what's the point, especially when, again, a real person is involved. If this film was a truly empathetic look at Norma Jean, it would not be this shallow with how it depicts her abuse. To just be upfront, I think it's just a disrespectful movie. I don't know how Andrew Dominique feels about Marilyn Monroe at the end of the day. Interviews suggest he really doesn't even like her. The film reads like it cared about her, but the takeaways and just existence of this thing make it feel like one big spit on her grave, so I really don't even know what to think anymore. It's an exploitative take on someone who suffered enough and did not need this movie to prove anything. It's just a waste of time and an eye roller, if I'm being honest. Seriously, if you want to watch better movies about about sort of similar themes, I cannot recommend Spencer, Firewalk With Me, and Pleasure enough. All three of them combined do everything this wishes it could. And you know what, that's my take on Blonde. Thanks for watching. Go watch this one and form your own opinion, and before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place where you can go online to build that brand of yours, whether it be an online store, a blog, a portfolio, you name it. You've been meaning to build that brand, Squarespace is the place to do it. They have professional portfolio designs where you can create galleries for your work as well as password protected pages for clients. Me personally, I'm a big fan of their video block feature, which allows me to showcase some of my favorite videos in a way that looks really nice. Plus they have a built-in mobile web designer, which makes it so that any website you make is gonna look great no matter what platform it's on while still matching your style. The best part about it all though, is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. So really there's no reason not to give it a chance. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching this video. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you in the next one. I better. Okay, thanks. Bye.